Hi everyone, Ramadan Mubarak. The holy month has already started. My today's video is all about some cleaning and preparations I did before Ramadan and how our first day went. I'm not going deep into any religious content in this, just an overall video. Now, as you all know, cleaning is very important especially when Ramadan is coming up and you might have seen in few of my videos how I deep clean. So, I don't want to show again the same part because it might get really boring. Now for going deep into the cleaning without any disturbance, let me give you some tips that I follow. First of all, I make the house cooler in all rooms cause when we deep clean we sweat a lot and go really tired. So better make your house a cooler place, on the AC or fan if you are not brooming. And then the other tip is, if you have kids at home or even for yourself, you definitely need food for lunch. So make something that's very easy to make. On my day I had made ghee rice and beef curry in pressure cooker and going it simple. And have something for yourself just before starting to clean. If you have your spouse or kids or any other members at home share the work. My kids had gone to school and husband was at office so I did the works which I could do myself all alone. Change the mats, change positions of your current settings. I change the settings of my house quite often cause I feel that I'm in a new home. Moreover you can remove all the dust that's under your bed or sofa if you change the location at least once in 2 or 3 weeks. Now that's my kids wardrobe, all cluttered, sorting out what need to be kept and what need to be given. Cleaning their toys and basket, I always tend to forget this part but it's very important to clean it well since your kids can be infected from this. I usually make them do their room but as they were at school and I had quite enough time, I thought of doing it for them. A big bunch of waste and two packets for charity. Changing the sheets. Let me show you a tip, if your sheet is quite big enough, tie both the ends under the bed. This helps the sheet stay in place. Or else go for fitted sheets, that's what we use for our master room. Final part is the kitchen which take quite a long time. I clean my gas stove with Jif and a little of washing liquid. And then scrub with steel scrubber. This I hadn't shown in any of my videos. When deep cleaning is done, I usually clean the kitchen floor, pouring water and brushing well, adding soap. I don't do this quite often as I clean the floor daily with cloth. So cleaning with soap is done when I feel the floor has gone quite oily and the grouts have changed its color to dark. So brushing with soap removes all the dirt.
Then for suhoor I had planned to make appam or neer dosa and chutney. So soaking the white rice for appam. Just before going to bed having buttermilk, I am making it with curd, adding a handful of coriander leaves, a very small piece of ginger, two green chillies, quarter teaspoon of chaat masala and some salt. My rehan was also ready for fasting. Then I slept for some time and got up quite early and prepared appam and chutney. I had shown how to prepare appam in my previous videos. Check the link above or below in my description. I like the flavor of appam when prepared in an iron pan. Meanwhile making a simple chutney grinding coconut coriander leaves green chilies and a small piece of ginger along with some warm water then seasoning with mustard seeds I had some curry left over from the previous day just boiling it to have it with appam. I kept everything ready on the table and woke them up. Having a banana first. I wanted to make lemon water for iftar as it was an organic soaking lemon and cucumber in water for a long time and then prayer time and straight to the bed for a nap. Then I woke up at 10:30 in the morning. I served Arman his breakfast. Slicing the cucumber and lemon for lemon water. add it to a jug full of water and just a mix then straight into the refrigerator for iftar i was making a snack for this i soaked up 1 cup white rice 1 cup jeera ka shala rice and 1/2 cup normal lunch rice then moved on to cleaning the vessels that i had after the suhoor loaded into the dishwasher next preparing a drink that i would make on all days of fasting it's called tarikani in our place in a vessel adding 2 cups milk and 2 cups water this was for four persons now for one glass of the drink one tablespoon of semolina is required so here adding four tablespoons then a pinch of salt less than quarter teaspoon then keep on medium heat and continue stirring when it starts boiling straight away reduce to low flame be careful it may spill over then continue till the semolina is well cooked finally giving a seasoning for it heating a tablespoon of ghee adding shallots and sauteing it well Then adding a handful of chopped cashews. You can add raisins and a pinch of cardamom powder too. Here we don't like the flavor of cardamom powder, so avoiding it. Now adding it to the mixture. Then adding two tablespoons of sugar. You can add more or less according to your taste buds.
It's better to clean all the vessels on the go to avoid piling up in the sink or else end of the day you will definitely be very tired and the kitchen would be like a mess. Then moving on to making pattiri. I have already shown this in my dinner vlog. Check out the link. Now someone had asked me about how I keep my knives sharpened. This is the knife sharpener I have. I had bought this from Lulu quite a long time back. Just hardly swiping to and fro through it and the knives would get sharpened. Then at the tip there would be the steel powder so wash it properly then making a simple chicken curry that goes very well with the pattiri into a pressure cooker add 2 or 3 tablespoons of coconut oil then firstly adding the ginger garlic and green chilli paste add a glug of water so that it doesn't stick to the bottom Sauteing it well till the raw smell goes. Adding onions, mix till soft. Then add clean chicken pieces. This is 1 kg chicken. Then adding 2 medium sized chopped tomatoes. Add salt, 1 teaspoon turmeric powder, 1 and a half tablespoon of coriander powder, half teaspoon garam masala powder, quarter teaspoon fennel seed powder, quarter teaspoon black pepper powder. Mix well. Then add around half to one cup of water. Cover and keep on medium flame and off it after the first whistle. Next move on to kneading the patri dough. Now this is the roti flattener that I had shown earlier. Let me show you how I tie the plastic cover on it. Pull everything to the back side and tie it tightly. Same way onto the other side. Tie it very tightly and that's how it is. It doesn't matter if you have any folds, small small thin folds on it. Just covering the patti so that it doesn't dry out. Meanwhile, the chicken is cooked now. From this, I am taking out a few fleshy pieces for the snack. Dry roasting around 1 to 3 fourth cup of coconut for the curry. To this, adding few cashews. It needn't be highly roasted. Once it turns to a dry texture, adding quarter teaspoon of turmeric powder, 1 teaspoon coriander powder, and roasting for two to three minutes and then let it cool down in between Arman was feeling very hungry so making an egg sandwich for him Then back to the kitchen, grinding the coconut with little water first and then instead of chopping I added a handful of coriander leaves to the mixture and grinding it again adding some more water. Then adding this mixture to the curry and boiling it for 2-3 to three minutes. Then gave a shower to Arman and I myself became fresh too.
Meanwhile, my husband had come from office and helped me in cooking the patties. The rice for the snack is well soaked by now. Grinding in a mixer, adding half cup coconut, one teaspoon cumin seeds, one teaspoon fennel seeds, and a few shallots. Then adding some water. It should be a semi-thick consistency, neither too thick nor too thin. adding some salt and mix then shredding the chicken pieces i am doing it with my hand you can use a grinder for this i have chopped up a large onion two green chilies and a handful of coriander leaves now into a kadai sauteing the onions and green chilies in some coconut oil Adding quarter teaspoon of garam masala powder, then goes in the shredded chicken and coriander leaves chopped. Mix well, adding some salt. Now in a steamer, here I have placed three small steel bowls. Add few drops of ghee into each bowl. Add a little of the batter first. then some chicken masala on top again add little batter just to cover the chicken add half teaspoon of ghee on top of each one and steam for 10 minutes you can do the same in a steel plate here i've used my kids tiffin spread ghee first then two big spoons of the batter then some masala now cover and let it steam for 3 to 4 minutes then open add a spoon of ghee on top adding two three spoons of the batter again then the masala and covering the top with some batter finally adding two teaspoons of ghee cover and steam for 15 minutes always take it out from the bowl or the steel plate after it has completely cooled down or else it will be very sticky and won't come out in good shape meanwhile has been helping in cutting the fruits Finally the prayer was called and time for iftar As we had a lot of fruits and had snacks we had our dinner very late and as it was weekend just got out so that's for my day's video dears do let me know how it went for you all thank you for watching would come with more vlogs and more recipes until then stay blessed take care bye bye assalam alaikum